Hello, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are and whenever you are. And welcome to my second Deforum tutorial. Today's subject is masking. In particular, doing masks in the box, so to speak, meaning only using the tools available to us through Deforum. Why? Because we can, and it's awesome, and it's free. There are other masking tools available to you, third-party tools. I use one from Runway ML, uh, which does AI masking on any videos, uh, but that kind of costs. So I wanted to make this a free thing. So let's look at all the free options we have, which is the forum, right? So let's get to it. So first thing, what is a mask? So in terms of the forum, masking allows us to affect a particular area of our video and leave the rest of it alone and when i say affect i mean uh, have the diffusion process operate on a particular subject or a particular part of our video we can achieve this using masks masks are at their simplest um, at their simplest a black and white video or image they can have shades of gray as well um, but i've generally just used black and white white in a mask means this is the stuff that you can do your diffusion on. Black means, hey, back off, leave it alone. So that's what we're going to be using. The source video that we're going to be playing around with is in my little inputs folder. And it's this chappy here, striding purposefully across a field. Don't know where, wearing a boiler suit. So maybe he's off to go and you know, fix a car. Maybe he's seen a crashed uh, light aeroplane that was crop dusting in the nearby fields. And he's thinking, ooh, salvage that, rescue the pilot, I'll be a hero. Either way, I need a boiler suit. But there he is, off he goes. Who knows where or why? And our job is to try to create a video where the rest of the uh, background is all completely untouched, but I want to turn him into something else. So our job is to try to create First off, a mask, which will tell the forum to only affect the character in our video. And we will get to that. So here I have the forum. I'm using a Rev Animated uh, Checkpoint. You can use whatever you want. Clearly, it doesn't actually matter. I just picked that one uh, random. I have a few others, but I'm yeah, going to use that one. Rev Animated works for me. So uh, all the videos I use when I'm creating my animations, I always downscale them to 480p. So today's video is at a resolution of 852 by 480. Now, uh, they don't fit into multiples of 64 in the forum, so I'm going to set the width to as close to 852 as I can and set the height to be as close to 480 as I can. Okay, so 832 by 448 works for me. Uh, Euler A sampler will do few extra steps no problem i'm going to leave the seed as it is you might look for a seed that you know works for you with a particular image but hey you know how to do that i'm not going to do that and let's change the name of the batch to be the forum mask tutorial one as if there could be others that's it that's all we need for the first part Let's look at the prompt before we look at the keyframes. I'm going, to, I'm going to keep it dead simple. Here's one I prepared earlier. I want to turn the masked area into a futuristic cyborg made of chrome with iridescent highlights, shiny and metallic, but no, no nudes. And it has to be safe to be looked at and work. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Boom, that's our prompt. You could put whatever you want in here, you could add extra keyframes, change the character over time, but I'm just gonna keep this one simple. Alrighty, so let's look at keyframes, very important. I always use 3D animation mode, you don't have to, but we're only interested in the animation modes 2D and 3D. We are not using video input. Um, now that's something I kind of covered in the control net, but in the, the control net tutorial. But uh, so stick with me this. I'm stick with me on this. I'm just going to stick with 3D. Set my cadence to one for now. The higher the cadence, you'll get lower um, uh, render times, which is really cool. And then you can uh, have the in between frames um, uh, worked on using uh, optical flow. Uh, but I'm not doing that for now. But you can. 
I know this video has about 240 frames, so I'm just going to do 120 to keep it short. I'm going to leave strength and CFG alone, but we will come back to those. I'm going to set the seed to be fixed. What fixed? Surely that'll just create an utter mess. Well, no, it won't, for reasons that will probably not be explained. So let's leave it at fixed. Uh, translation Z, no, I don't want any movement at all done by the forum. Leave it alone. The video's got enough movement in it, in it as possible. However, you can do really cool effects by maybe you know, putting keyframes on the translation Z parameter or rotating it, and you'll get some really weird effects which are quite cool and trippy and psychedelic, but not today. Today is about bland. So we're going to keep all the uh, animation parameters alone, not interested in noise, coherence, not going to do anything there, anti-blur, whatever, blah, 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 not doing anything with those for now. I typically switch off for videos, I switch off the uh, noise multiplier. I typically bump my noise schedule back down to zero and just leave it there. Okay. Right. However, we need a mask. We need to create a mask. But luckily, we have something special available to us called human masking, courtesy of the wonderful, really big name. Shout out to him and his hybrid video coolness. So, but we need to prepare some things first. So, Hybrid Video has this option called Humans Masking. So you go to Hybrid Video, you choose Video under Humans Masking, you go to Video, you say Generate Input Frames, and then you click Normal. Hit Generate. If I look at my command line prompt, you will see that it has tried to create a checking, creating a folder oh, for the human ma for the human masks. Okay, so that's what it's done. We can now interrupt. We're not interested in anything at this point in time. All we want it to do is get hybrid video to generate a human mask video. So if we now go to our file explorer and I go to my project or my batch we now have a folder in there called human masks and if we look in here it's created a mask video for our subject how cool is that how easy was that looks kind of better actually can't see his boiler suit very important bang so now we have a video mask which we can use uh, for the rest of this tutorial fantastic uh it's created some hybrid frames some input frames i'm going to be really naughty right i'm going to get rid of all these for now and start again you don't have to but i just i'm a bit kind of anal like that i just like to clean things up but I, it's completely useless and pointless but we are going to keep the human mask so so now once it has created that mask for us i can just hit none over here so it won't do it again but we'll be coming back to this shortly so now let's go back to our init tab and now we can say use a mask video so we click that on we navigate to where our mask video is which is in human masks right click copy his path stick it in here and now we have a mask video which will be utilized it's worth noting that this mask init tab has settings which also affect the mask that's um, affect the uh, video mask, even though this is initially for a mask file. Um, so as an aside, you can provide a static mask as well, which would just apply for, over the entirety of your video. Uh, and that might be useful for you. Um, but in this case, no, we want a moving mask because the, the character is moving too. Um, there are a couple of issues with masking at the moment. So you need to make sure that original is switched on. You don't necessarily need a full res mask. You can switch off overlay mask, and I think everything else can stay as it is. All right, so that's our mask setup. We've now geared up for using masks. And now we need to get into the meat, which is well, how we now go, how are we going to render that white area? What are we going to do to make it look cool and look like a cyborg? So I like control nets, and I'm going to use a very simple tried and tested technique, which is using the tile model without any preprocessor. Uh, it yields some pretty good results, but 
I encourage you to experiment with multiple control nets and uh, different settings, different weights, but I'm just going to use a straightforward one here. So I'm going to go to control net, enable the first one, no P processor, choose the tile. I'm using the uh, the latest um, models. You can tell that they're uh, late because they've got V11. Some have P, which is for uh, public or, or um, production uh, models. Some have uh, F, which is fix. E, which is experimental. Tile is a experimental model. So we're going to use that one. I choose pixel perfect, and I'm going to bump the weight, the effect of this control net. I'm going to pump it right up to two. And likewise, you want to tell control net uh, the video path, right? Where is this content that it's going to apply the, uh, the uh, tile model to? So again, just navigate to where your content is. And here's my file here. Copy that as a path. and smash it in there and i'm going to say control net is more important all right so that's that part done so the control net is all set up you may want to add others for example head preprocessor with a soft edge model or depth uh, i always generally go for depth but um I'm just going to try tile on its own and see what comes out. And now we're almost at the end of this part. So let's go back to our keyframes. And remember how I said we would come back to strength and CFG. Now, this is only because of the way I'm using the tile model in control net. Uh, and this might look weird to everyone else that's used the strength schedule with their normal animations. But I'm going to set the strength to zero. Every single frame will be not influenced by the previous frame. They'll be completely freshly rendered. And then with CFG, uh, experimentation says that three is a good value when using the tile uh, model. So I'm going to trust that you might want to try different CFGs as well. And I've been experimenting and not sure exactly if it makes a massive difference, but I'm sure somebody will tell me that it does. And as before, we're going to leave the seed as fixed. OK, so really super fast wrap up. We've got a we've got our run tab set up. Uh, we set the width and height uh, to closely match as closely as possible our video. We're in 3D mode, cadence 1, 120 frames, half of what we want to get, but that's because I want to keep this short. Set the strength to 0, CFG to 3, C to fixed. Okay, no motion happening in there. We don't need that. I've got a prompt. I've got a, uh, a video in it path with a mask video specified in there as well. And I've got a single control net. All right, and under hybrid video, um, I'm just going to use it for compositing. Um, now, this is, might sound strange, but I found I've had to, I have to leave this on. I have to leave normal on and not none. I'm going to do some more experimentation and um, maybe reach out to some other people as to why that is the case. But I'm getting different results if I switch off hybrid compositing. I think it's something to do with the fact that I've got a video path. I've got a video which I'm working on, but I'm kind of not using it here because it's 3D mode. So hybrid basically brings the video in and allows me to use it. I think that's kind of me making all that up. Um, and because I basically just want to see the video, I'm going to set the comp alpha schedule to be quite high. That's like a mixer. A low value brings in more of the like hybrid motion stuff, but there isn't any hybrid motion going on here either. So maybe that doesn't make a difference. So I'll ask Mr. Really Big Name to see if that is important. But anyway, I'm leaving that as 0 0.9. I am rambling. Let's crack on. So that's it. That's all we have to do. I'm going to set my frames per second to be the same as my video, which is 30. Everything else is all cool. I'm not going to do any interpolation. I'm not going to do any um, uh, upscaling. You may or may not know that um, one of the developers, hi there, has added the ability to, when you interpolate, it will also use the upscaled version of your video. So if you choose to do upscaling, it'll do the upscaling and then it will interpolate. So you will get a upscaled interpolated video. Before this, you would either get an interpolated video or an upscale video 
or both, but never the two mixed. So thanks to him for adding that. But I'm not doing any interpolation. So let's turn that off. I'm not doing any upscaling. Right, so without further ado, let's hit the generate button and we'll put on some beautiful homemade tunes to keep you occupied while I speed this up. I'm off to play some Call of Duty. Welcome back. It's done. Oh my god, I just got massacred in the DMZ in Warzone. Uh, I'm not sure if any of you know this, but there's this hidden, super hard um, sort of level that you can go in as. Uh, armed only with just, uh, just well, basically, you're just wearing a pair of underpants. So you have to basically fight your way across the map with your fists. Um, I did get pretty far, but then I got taken out. Um, so uh, anyway, hopefully I can get back into that a little bit later on. So let's see what it did. The console is telling us that everything's finished. If we click here after the generation to show the video and let's see what it came up with. So we can see the background hasn't changed. We've still got grass and the chalk. Little bit of tw changes on it. You can see how it's slightly blown out here. But the important thing is, is that our character has been turned into some sort of a freaky cyborg, way better than the blue slash black boiler suit he was wearing when we first met him. So that's what's been generated for us. Now, there is uh, there are some extra um, things that you can do. There's something I always like to play around with, which is once I've got a video like this, where the character has been affected by a prompt, I then use this video as the source video for another render, I use the same video mask file, but I invert it instead. Because you'll see, if you go, remember how I said this mask init tab also influences what's in the video init tab, you can choose the invert mask option. So that basically means that what was white is now black and what's black is now white, which means if we were to apply that mask to this video, we can then run a prompt which only affects the background and leaves the character unrendered. But we're not going to do that today. I'll likely create a shorter tutorial where I show you how to do that. Okay, so that's masking in a nutshell. If I were you, I'd experiment with you know adding some extra um, tweaks in here, maybe doing some uh, some optical flow on the character itself. Like I said before, I normally, you know, add a few extra control nets just because my my GPU can handle it. I typically, like to do some depth processing. Um, uh, I also like to add yeah, a little bit of soft edge with the head preprocessor as well, which can also help make things look a bit cleaner. Um, it will it will obviously increase your render times, but um, but it's worth it. All right, so that's the most simple. Uh, way of doing masks within the forum. In my next tutorial, I'm going to take a dive into the uh, the composable masks uh, that are available to you, which are quite advanced, uh, but I look forward to showing them to you uh, once I've worked out how they work. All right, um, if you like this, obviously like, comment. Um, you can find me in the Discord server amongst uh, all the other great helpers and mods that are there. Uh, let's keep that community going, um, and uh, I'll see you at the next one. All right, ta-ta.